Greetings in Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters. In this video, I'm going to address the question of whether there will be a revival in the last days preceding the Lord's return, or whether there's going to be some sort of an evangelistic event in which large numbers of people will come to Christ in the days before his return. I realize that there are some Christians who believe that one or both of these things are going to happen in the last days. And uh, their reasons for believing this is because of misunderstandings of and misapplications of Old Testament scriptures and New Testament scriptures. So the answer to those questions, uh, to, to whether there's going to be a revival of the saints in the last days, which apostate Christians are going to return to the Lord, or whether there's going to be an evangelistic event in which large numbers of unsaved people are going to get saved, uh, no, that's the answer to both questions. Um, as far as the evangelistic event is concerned, there is an exception to that, and I've addressed that in another video regarding the 144,000 male Jews who will be saved before the judgments of God start falling and the persecution of Christians during the tribulation begins. But apart from them, no, there isn't going to be a, a, a large number of people coming to Christ in the last days. Um, I'm only going to address two scriptures that I think may be misleading people concerning these, uh, concerning this matter. Uh, one of them is going is uh, in the, the second chapter of Acts, in which the apostle Peter quotes the prophet Joel speaking about the last days and the pouring out of the spirit in the last days. Uh, at the beginning of that passage, Peter makes it clear that he is speaking about events that are currently taking place. He says that he is quoting Joel and saying that what Joel was speaking about is referring to events that are taking place at that time, which they were. Uh, obviously not everything in that prophecy has been fulfilled. It goes on to talk about the signs that precede the coming of the Lord, which are the same as the signs that are described in the book of Revelation. But as far as the, the, as far as the evangelism is concerned, large numbers of people coming to the Lord, that's already been fulfilled. So, um, and again, the, the, one, the 144,000 male Jews being an exception, there aren't going to be large numbers of people coming to Christ in the days before his return. Um, another scripture that people may be confused about, that they may misunderstand, would be uh, Revelation chapter 12, talking about the two witnesses, the two prophets who are going to be prophesying during the tribulation. But there's no mention of those two men being evangelists or preaching the gospel. It says that they're prophesying during the time. It does not say that they're preaching the gospel, nor does it say that large numbers of people come to Christ as a result of what they're preaching. It does say that the people want to kill them and that they hate their message. So, be careful not to read things into the scriptures that aren't there, because that doesn't say anything whatsoever about these two men preaching the gospel. Um, and obviously, we it does tell us what the people's reaction to what they prophesy is going to be. Uh, my understanding of what they're going to be prophesying is that they're going to be declaring God's judgment for the sins that people are committing. It's, they're going to be declaring people's sins to them, and they're going to be declaring God's righteous judgment for their sins. And people are going to hate them for doing that, and they're going to want to kill them. So... There is no, no mention whatsoever of these men either preaching the gospel or of people receiving the gospel on account of their prophesying. Uh, I'm sure there are other scriptures that are being used to 
support the idea that there's going to be a revival or that there's going to be a large number of people coming to the Lord in the last days. But whatever they're, whatever people may be using to support either of those teachings, they are simply misunderstanding and um, misapplying the scriptures because neither of those things are going to happen. Uh, as far as a, re a revival of the saints, there's no mention of that either, except by misinterpretation of scriptures, probably Old Testament scriptures, um, and also perhaps a confusion of a revival versus people getting saved. And they're not the same thing. A revival, I mean, if you're taking it in a literal sense, a revival is the re-enlivenment of people who have life like apostate Christians. Um, but there's not going to be a revival of the church. There's not going to be a revival of the saints. Um, and uh, Christians who are taking scriptures that talk about the salvation of unsaved people and applying those things to Christians, you know, again, uh, People getting saved, being quickened, is not the same as people being revived. Like the church in Sardis, they needed to be revived. People who don't have life need to be quickened. <laughs> um, so they're not one and the same thing. But in any case, whatever scriptures people may be using to support either one of those things happening in the last days, either large numbers of people coming to Christ or apostate Christians returning to Christ, neither of those things are going to happen. And um, so if people are teaching that or believing that, it's because they're mistaken. What the Bible does talk about in terms of what's going to be happening with Christians in the last days is that they're going to be falling away from Christ, not that they're going to be returning to him. There is no, there is a mention of them falling away. There is no mention of them returning, except on an individual basis. There will be Christians who do return to the Lord, but it's not going to be large numbers of Christians, at least not as many as those who are going to fall away and not return. Um, yeah, so the apostasy that you currently see is going to continue. And individuals will choose to repent. They will choose to wash their robes. They will choose to return to the Lord. But the majority of us will not. If you want to see a revival, look in the mirror. And if you need to repent, if you need to change, then you make the choice to do that today. That's the only revival there's going to be, is individuals choosing to obey the Lord, repenting of their sins as necessary and doing what they know the Lord wants them to do. So that's the answer to that question. And if you want to see the revival, be the revival. <laughs>